me again. I'm lying on the couch and I'm looking at emails and then I got this email that's asking me to make a video, so don't mind me if I don't get up. <laughs> I was like, I don't have to get up to make a video, do I? No. Okay, so this person writes in, I'm wondering if you could address this problem in a video. I feel like it's an issue for a lot of people, or maybe I hope so. Um, and w when she says she hopes so, she, I think she's saying she hopes she's not the only one that struggles with this. Not that she's saying she hopes other people struggle with this. <laughs> At least, I hope not. <laughs> um, okay, so um, for some strange reason, I started to believe that I don't and never really had an eating disorder, even though I have all of the symptoms. My mind keeps telling me that I'm just faking an eating disorder and I don't need or don't deserve to change or receive help because it's not a real problem. It's just something that I'm making up. And she goes on to say, I recently started working with a therapist nutritionist. Now that I'm in recovery, I almost feel like I have to continue convincing myself and others that my eating disorder exists. I find myself stopping myself from eating certain things in order to prove my eating disorder is real to my nutritionist. Uh, I know that I'm unhappy with my current mate and the mindset that I'm at, so why do I feel like uh, this is something I have to compete in um, like a creative for myself? It's made me feel a pressure to keep up the act for myself and for those helping me recover. I feel like this is, and um, keep up the act was in commas, by the way, inverted commas. Um, I feel this is the biggest factor which holding me back from getting better, and I want to, your advice on how to get over this feeling. Is this even a normal feeling? Wow. Funny you should ask that. But yes, um, I've had quite that come up quite a lot, and that actually reading that email made me think of something that I know I put in this book. Um, and so I've got. I'm going to also read an extract from this. This is this is something that somebody else, um, not this person, wasn't actually a, quiet, a client. This is a person from one of the snap groups. She wrote. Um, I used to starve myself before I see someone so that they can see what's going on. Um, as soon as I started the process of um, inpatient intake in early March, just to be really sick when I got there, I think I made myself eat a lot less. Um, and this is in the chapter about event restriction, which I've done videos on event restriction as well. Um, but someone else wrote, I've been event restricting as long as I remember. The thing that makes me want to restrict most these days is when I have to go to the eating disorder unit to be weighed. I didn't mind all the time I was losing weight, but now I'm gaining. I have a huge fear that they will discharge me now I'm supposedly weight restored when I know my eating disorder is still very active. Um, so that's actually somebody who's super smart, maybe a little bit smarter than the people um, who are treating her. Oh God, I shouldn't say things like that, should I? Anyway, she knows that despite the fact that she is a normal BMI that she's not probably normal for her and that she needs to gain weight for her but she's scared that because she is a normal BMI that she's going to get discharged and therefore she won't continue to get help if she gains weight so that's a real catch-22 isn't it knows that she needs to gain more weight knows that if she does gain more weight she's going to get discharged before she's actually at the weight that is healthy for her body her eating disorder will still be active and so She's kind of up shit creek without a paddle, to put it politely. That's not very polite, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, this is something that happens quite a lot. I don't know that I really experienced this very much myself because I never went to treatment. So I didn't really have anyone to try and convince that I was sick. And that sounds stupid to say, doesn't it? But I think that, well, one thing I know is that when you have anorexia, we have this thing called anosognosa, which is you don't know the extent to which you're sick. And why I think this happens is I, you know, you know me, I'm all about the kind of biology and the evolutionary theory. So why I think that plays into that is that say a bird has got to migrate from England to Australia and say that bird isn't actually that well. That doesn't mean it doesn't get to migrate, does it? Like if that bird can't stay there because it would die because there's not enough food. So that bird's body, when it knows it gets that evolutionary kick and it kicks in, we got to migrate now because there's not enough food. That bird still wants to fly and it wants to migrate. And it will probably do so despite the fact that it's got some ailment, despite the fact that maybe its wing hurts, whatever, it's going to need to fly anyway. So I think what happens is when our brains think that we need to migrate because there's not enough food around, we need to move and we can't just sit and contemplate, then they, they kind of like 
protect us from knowing that we're not very well. And that's what I really think anosognosa is, in which is not knowing how sick you are in relation to anorexia. It's like, like people used to be able to say to me, you're really unwell, your body can't keep up with this, look what you're doing to my bo your body. And it was like, it didn't even touch me. It was like I had this shield up around myself where I could hear what they were saying, but the words were just words. They didn't actually mean anything to me. Whereas now, if someone said that to me, like, I've got to look after myself. <laughs> and that, those, those words would have a meaningful effect to me. So I think that all of that plays into not kind of knowing or feeling how sick or the degree of illness that you are. So then if you get admitted to eating disorder treatment, you're suddenly thinking like, well, shit, I'm a fraud because I don't feel that unwell because you don't because you've got anorexia and that's part of the problem. And so you start to think, well, shit, now I'm now people are just going to think I'm faking this. And that's embarrassing because I'm not the type of person that does that. So, you know, because you already have anorexia, which in your brain, anorexia is going to jump on any inkling of a reason as to why you should move, lose more weight. And ironically that I've got to go into treatment or I'm in treatment and I have anorexia, therefore I want to look like I have anorexia reason to lose more weight in your kind of like messed up, not logical thinking anorexia riddle brain. And I don't mean that in a condescending way, like you can't think you're a smart person, you can think, but anorexia does certain things to our brain. Like I'm a smart person, at least I, I like to think so. But you know, like I'm a relatively smart person. But when I had anorexia, I did not think very logically about a lot of things, many things, most things, <laughs> anything to do with food and exercise, my brain was shot. So anorexia kind of muddles us a little bit and your brain is primed to be all over anything that makes weight loss seem like a good idea. And so I think this, there's two things going on. One, that protection barrier that your brain puts around you to not let you know or feel how sick you are because it doesn't want you to know because it's like, you're fine, you just keep migrating, don't worry about it. Shh. That's what your brain's doing. It doesn't want you to like suddenly know how sick you are because then you panic and you'd be like, I can't move, I can't go anywhere, I'm not very well. That doesn't serve migration. So your brain's like, shh, shh, you're fine. And coupled that with another part of your brain is like, weight loss is weight loss is a great idea. Always do that. You don't need to eat. Why would you need to eat? Eating's a bad idea. Don't do that. So both those things work together to make something like being diagnosed with anorexia or going to an eating disorder treatment center, seeing an eating disorder therapist or a coach seem like in your brain, that's the sort of illogical anorexia thinking comes to the logic of, I need to lose more weight to prove that I have anorexia, which is really fucked up. But anorexia is pretty fucked up, isn't it? So what do you do? <laughs> Just like with most things with anorexia, you've got, to, you've got to ignore that crazy anorexia brain. What that's saying, you don't want to listen to that. In fact, the best thing to do with your anorexia brain is to do the exact opposite of what it's asking you to do. So if you have this little anorexia brain that's trying to convince you that it's a good idea to not eat before you go and see your therapist or it's a good idea to not eat the week before you've got an inpatient admission do the opposite thing <laughs>